between Simeon and the infant Jesus. One ancient commentator notes that Simeon's perspective changed when he saw the Lord. St. Luke tells us that beforehand Simeon was waiting for the consolation of Israel. That is, he was expecting salvation for his own race. But when he saw the Lord in the temple, he saw more. He saw that salvation would be extended to all the nations, and that this child would be their light. And he saw also that some of his own people would fall. For as he said, this child is set for the fall and for the resurrection of many in Israel. As a commentator says, so enlightened was he by the unspeakable radiance of the child, that he perceived at a glance things that were to happen a long time afterwards. And not only did he see future things, but he also saw hard things, the fall of some of his own people. From the Holy Scriptures, we know of other instances in which an encounter with Christ enlightened someone. They reach beyond human expectations to the divine. Their faith penetrates the mystery. For example, the centurion at the cross. He thought Christ to be a mere man as he was nailed to the cross. But when he witnessed the way that he endured his torments, his charity toward the good thief, his vigorous cry as he died, he came to see that this man was the Son of God. St. Thomas the Apostle had a similar experience. For him, Jesus was dead, a wise and powerful man, but a man nonetheless. Upon seeing his wounds, however, and hearing his rebuke, Thomas confessed him to be God, my Lord and my God. Through the gift of faith, we also have these experiences. We see the crucifixion not as weakness, but as power and as a pledge of our salvation. We see the Eucharist not as bread, but what it truly is, the body of Christ. In these moments of faith, there is both certainty and obscurity. Faith gives us certainty. It heals and overcomes our doubt. But there is also obscurity, for our minds and hearts are too small, too weak to fully grasp the mystery. And so St. Thomas knew that Christ was God, but what that meant for his life was unclear to him. Just as Simeon knew Jesus would be consolation to many, but now that he saw his face, he saw there was more. He was a stumbling block for some and a light to the nations. What was known beforehand was laid aside at the touch of Christ in exchange for deeper knowledge. As St. Paul wrote to the Philippians, the things that were gained to me, the same I have counted lost for Christ. I count all things to be but loss for the excellent knowledge of Jesus Christ my Lord. For Simeon, this moment came when he held Jesus in his arms. Tonight, through this holy feast, we're invited to do the same. In fact, we were already invited to do this long ago, but today's feast tells us to better understand the mystery of our calling. St. Ambrose writes, Whoever would be cleansed, let him come into the temple. Let him wait for the Lord's Christ. Let him receive in his hands the word of God and embrace him with the arms of faith. When we hold Christ in our arms as Simeon did, we, project, we protect the fragility of his presence in our minds and hearts. For in his humanity he is small and weak. At the same time, because this child is God, we exchange our own notions of what the Christian life should feel like to take in whatever he teaches us as we gaze upon his face. Christ is the light of the world and also our own light. And so if we look steadily at him, he overwhelms the lesser lights of our minds. He gives us certainty in his mission and his power that he alone is the answer to all of our questions, the remedy for all of our ills. At the same time, because our previous understanding is swallowed up by his great light, we are plunged into a certain obscurity, for we cannot see as clearly as we once did. Our former lights are shown to be what they really are, which is mere human lights. We canons have been through a lot the past couple years, and many of you have as well. In such situations, certainty in the truth of the gospel grows in us, 
while personal darkness also increases. And so what should we do in these moments? Imitate the holy man Simeon. Hold the child closer to us. Make sure he's secure in your arms. And then look upon his blessed face. With the help of God's grace, we can hold him, however unsure we are of what we are doing. And we can direct our gaze to him. That is our responsibility. But he is the one who enlighten us. He is the one who will strengthen. He is the one who will deepen our trust in him, moment by moment. Tonight, let us ask St. Simeon to pray for us, that as he waited on the Lord, we also may wait. As he trusted that salvation would come, may we also have confidence in our Savior. Lead kindly light amid the encircling gloom. Lead thou me on. The night is dark and I am far from home. Lead thou me on. Keep thou my feet. I do not ask to see the distant scene. One step enough for me.